Jackson. Jackson, thank you for being here. Thank We're you. So excited to have you. Thanks. You are a, an incredibly successful politician, but most people know you from your TikTok videos. <laughs> You do these incredible explainers that distill down pretty complex issues in a, in a really clear, digestible way. Is the intent to simplify these issues for, for people and get that engagement, or are you really just posting uh, foot pics? Every consultant in D.C. told me to go the foot direction. Yes. I said, that's not what I'm about. No. You're a hands guy? <laughs> I love a good hand TikTok. Oh, show me that. That Vogue era. Yeah. <laughs> Give me some of this. Let's see oh, oh uh, Lauren Bobert had a great hands video a few months ago. <laughs> great. Great, great. Is that what you're talking about? I'm a kitchen table guy. <laughs> right. Sure. I have a kitchen table. I put a camera on the other side. I look into it. I say, here's the most interesting thing that happened to me in Congress this week. And then I post it to a bunch of different social media platforms. I have been really surprised by the level of interest in this political environment where everyone is yelling at each other all the time to be able to speak in a normal tone of voice and try to convey some of the complexity and some of the nuance that there would be broad interest for that, I think is really encouraging. I think it's a good sign. Mm -hmm. I, I know. I feel the, the platforms that we have our conversations on dictate the types of conversations we have. And TikTok is a short attention span platform. Like, what does it say about our democracy that this is where the conversations are happening? I've been surprised. I wouldn't have expected that. So I post to TikTok, but also Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, the place where most people view is TikTok. When I'm home in my district, constituents come up and they say, hey, I appreciate what you posted on TikTok. I would not have predicted that. I will tell you I've got 760,000 some odd constituents. My sense is about 300,000 of them are on TikTok. No. I know TikTok's got all kinds of issues, but I think that reaching my constituents where they are is also something of real value. It should be normal and expected that your elected officials try and use social media to keep you posted about what they're doing. It should be part of our job. You, you think... Sure. You, you think, though, half of your constituents are on TikTok. How many high schools do you have in your district? <laughs> uh, you know, I've got a lot of young people, but look, there are people of all ages on all of these social media platforms, and every once in a while, you meet a grandma who comes up and says, I really love you on TikTok. Oh, so sweet. Usually they mention Facebook, but sometimes TikTok. <laughs> So, you were talking about some of the issues with TikTok. Nikki Haley has just openly spoken about banning TikTok and the security concerns. Do you have those concerns? Yeah, those concerns are all legit. Look, I have a phone that has one app on it, and that app is TikTok, and that's how I handle that. And that's because you, you fear what, what could happen. I mean, because the, the overall threat is that uh, essentially the Chinese government has access to your information and can influence the discourse because of it. Those are all absolutely credible concerns. As long as roughly half of my constituents are there, I'm going to try and use it for good and keep them posted about what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about some of the people you work with. You, you called out on your famous TikTok videos uh, that a lot of the people in Congress you sense are faking this outrage, that what we're seeing at home is essentially a bunch of people faking it. Uh, who would you put on blast? Who are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. And does it rhyme with Schmarjorie, Schmaler, Schmee? Yeah. <laughs> All I will say is this. It's not George Santos. <laughs> never. He's not faking it? Never a false word from that gentleman. Uh -huh. um, I'll tell you this. I've been in committees, and I have watched when the camera turns on, people's personalities change completely right before your eyes. It's really jarring. It is literal theater, and you've got a handful of people there who are in competition with each other every day to be the most outrageous, which is why it feels like when you look at Congress, they're on this escalator that's just increasingly crazy and angry. It's because they're playing a very specific game to try and get the attention of a very specific group of people, and it's awful and exhausting. Most of the people up there aren't playing that game. The people we keep getting served up, 
They're playing the Outrage Olympics every day. That's how they treat their job in Congress, as the daily tryouts for the Outrage Olympics. Now, I, I find it interesting because you have found the success. You don't seem like the outrage kind of guy. No, no, no. You always seem like you're at like an even five. Just yeah. <laughs> about yeah, right. you got like a, you got like a nice dad energy. Good dad. Nice. Like I'm not gonna drink with you, but I will pick you up if you drink too much. Yes. I will. No you questions asked. Give me a call, right? I'm that guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you? Think <laughs> well, and let me tell you something else. I think right now, that's the dad America needs. I could also see kind of a, uh, a tipsy uncle who could whip this country back into shape doing all that. We're dangerously close to Yeah, that. just like, <laughs> uncle is going to turn on us. We better shape up. What, what does boil your blood? Does anything get you going? Outright political corruption. For example, yeah. my state, North Carolina, a horrible history with gerrymandering. Gerrymandering is just letting politicians draw their own districts because when you do that, they're all going to cheat. My party, when my party had the ability to draw the districts in North Carolina, they always cheated. When I was in the state legislature, the first bill I ever filed was to end gerrymandering, and they sent it to a committee that hasn't met in 20 years. Mm. We can't let politicians draw their own districts because they screw the voters every single time. No more gerrymandering across the entire country. Sure. Yeah. How do we fix this cancer on political discourse? How do you solve that? Don't vote for anyone who isn't explicitly committed to independent redistricting. Independent redistricting is how you solve gerrymandering. If there is any elected official or candidate who says, well, I don't know if I'm for it, maybe, maybe not, uh-uh. We should just have a bright line. Gerrymandering is unethical. There is never a defense for drawing districts to favor one party or the other. Don't vote for anyone who would ever engage in that behavior. That's how we solve it. Now, you are, you've, been, you've been in Congress for about 11 months now, and you're, you're planning on getting gerrymandered out. And you're running for attorney general, attorneys general? It's attorneys general. It's very awkward. Why I don't is know. That? Could, you, could you do an explainer on why it's attorneys general? Yeah. And, and short TikTok length, because it's easier to understand. And also, I think I would get bored more for more than 30 seconds about it. It's a bad decision that someone made a long time ago. Oh, OK. Well, you're welcome. We don't have a shortage of those. <laughs> but even your new role that you're running for right now, would you be able to address gerrymandering? Absolutely. Look, the attorney general's job is standing up for people. It's sort of the opposite of what you see a lot of in Congress. It's not about the theatrics. It's not about the left or the right. It's just about doing what's right, standing up against political corruption, against business corruption, especially when consumers are getting screwed, and organized crime. We got a huge fentanyl problem in North Carolina. We got it across the entire country. The attorney general gets to be directly involved in handling all of that. It's a really wonderful job. Wow. Well, thank you for coming on with us. You seem like the perfect guy for the job, that's for sure. Give it up for Representative Jackson.